Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and do you sometimes feel lonely on the internet? Do you think there's a lot less of me and you and more of the people speaking ones and zeros? I'm talking about bots, ladies and gentlemen. Well, today we're looking into something known as the dead internet theory. Now, you probably heard about this from your favorite horror spooky channels, but to be real with you, uh, from a technical perspective, what we're looking at is not so much a theory. Again, like I said, it's an objective reality. Now, the internet theory is one theory that had its initial showcase in 4chan's paranormal board. So if you actually look into the original post here real quick, one user writes, Hey, I'd like to talk, or rather tell you about certain suspicions, hunches, and experiences I've had, and I'm sure some of you as well. Similar themes have been written about across image boards quite a few times, so, I'm not, so I know I'm not alone in this. So obviously their background is something of an old person. They've seen it all. They started going on 4chan in 2006 and followed the roads of the internet as many people in that early era did. So some of the points that they brought up was the internet feels empty and devoid of people. It is also devoid of content. Compared to the internet of say 2007 and beyond, the internet of today is entirely sterile. Again, this was posted in 2019, so pretty relatively close to our time right now. There's nowhere to go and nothing to do, see, read, or experience anymore. It all imploded into a handful of normal sites and these empty husks we inhabit. Yes, the internet may seem gigantic, but it's like a hot air balloon with nothing inside. Some of this is absolutely the fault of corporations and government entities. However, that doesn't explain the followings. So they started to list some bullet points over here and said, I used to be in perpetual contact with a solid number of people across multiple sites. Across the years, each and every one of them vanished without a trace. None of them were into poll stuff or anything remotely questionable or controversial. They all just vanished in a puff of smoke. Yeah, their friends just disappeared. One day they were online, the, the next day their accounts just ceased to exist, I guess. I've seen the same threads, the same pictures, the same replies posted over and over across the years to the point of me seeing it as unremarkable. Simply put, Thread A would be posted in, say, 2015 and would get its share of replies or pics on, say, Co and A. And then there was the very same thread with the same text, pics, and replies would appear in 2016. Again, this is this person's actual understanding and their own personal experiences. So while this post is very, very long, I wanted to look at one actual, uh, you know, post that pretty much summarized this in the best way possible from a, a website known as agoraroad.com. On this forum, there was one post known as the dead internet theory. Most of the internet is fake. And this was posted in 2021. Again, close to our time in relative, you know, present nature. Now this was posted by an account known as Illuminati Pirate. And of course, they said, we're living in the 90s. I love this actual image, by the way. Can't, can't, can't be forgetting the old classic days of Windows, you know, before we had the monstrosity that it is today. So TLDR, large proportions of the supposedly human-produced content on the internet are actually generated by artificial intelligence networks in conjunction with paid, secret media influencers in order to manufacture consumers for an increasing range of newly normalized cultural products. So while looking past that original post, which was just, again, copied from 4chan, the next thing was a set of conspiracies that honestly kind of opened my eyes a little bit. Now, in 2004, they, know, they, they uh, referenced something known as LifeLog, and this was canceled. Facebook literally came into being soon after. Now, for anybody that doesn't know what LifeLog was, the goal of it from DARPA, which is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency of the DOD, it was supposed to compile a massive electronic database of every activity and relationship a person engaged in, and that would include credit card purchases, websites visited, the content of telephone calls and emails sent and received, scans of faxes, and postal mail sent and received, instant messages sent and received, effectively logging every single thing somebody ever did on the internet just down to, again, from beginning all the way to end. So when LifeLog was canceled, it was canceled around February 4, 2004. Now, Facebook as a company, when we look at when it was founded real quick, oh, February 4, 2004, they were founded. That was a pretty, pretty happy coincidence that a website literally designed to catalog your activities on the internet and, again, for you to log aspects of your life 
was literally made. So between 2004 and 2012, they pointed out, and the NSA, the National Security Agency, picked up DARPA's project under the Total Informational Awareness Project. So there's a link to this New York Times post where it says, giving in to the surveillance state. And again, this is posted behind a paywall with the actual, um, you know, New York Times. A paywall that I do not care to actually jump into. But again, if we just look up what the total information awareness really is, this was a mass detection program by the US Information Awareness Office based on the concept of predictive policing that, that sounds like Minority Report, Jesus Christ. The program modeled specific information sets in the hunt for terrorists around the globe. I mean, literally, this is Minority Report. TIA's goal was to revolutionize the ability to detect, classify, and identify foreign terrorists and decipher their plans to preempt and disrupt any terrorist activity. I mean, literally, they would just do predictive analysis and test human behavior to see who would attack the USA and who wouldn't. Now, before we go further down that list that's going to scare the hell out of us, ladies and gentlemen, to give you one quick idea about the internet of, of, as a whole, the actual amount of traffic that exists is pretty much actually proven by science that it is more bot traffic than actual human traffic that exists on the internet. So you might have read this report about bots are taking over the internet and effectively you might have heard the actual idea that nearly half of all of the internet traffic in 2023 came from bots and that number steadily increases year after year. So one of the reports from this group known as Imperva, which is again in the cybersecurity field, they analyzed the activity from three sources. One is a bad bot, one is a good bot, and one is human traffic. So obviously human traffic, thankfully, was at least 52.6%. But that meant 30.2% and 17.3% respectively belong to, you know, bad bots and good bots. Unfortunately, the bad bots were a little higher than the good bots. In fact, not a little, but well, substantially higher. So they said that out of all internet traffic in 2022, 47.4% was automated traffic, also commonly referred to as bot, compared to 42.3% in 2021. What they also said was the percentage of human traffic continued a downward trend. So in 2021, they were 57.7% of all the traffic was actually human generated. And that number went down to 52.6% in 2022. So what is a good bot and what is a bad bot necessarily? So to give an idea, a bot in general is just a software application that just performs automated tasks on the internet. So a good bot in this situation, a good bot is something like Googlebot, for instance, or Bingbot. So search engine bots whose job it is is to index websites so that you and I can search for them on the internet and basically get to them easily. That's an example of a pretty good bot. Now, according to, you know, obviously Imperva, a bad bot is a software application that runs automated tasks with malicious intent. So basically these bots just scrape data from websites without any form of permission. Kind of sounds similar to all these AI tools that exist, right? That literally just scrape all the information made on the internet, throw them into their algorithms, throw them into their models, and just use it to regurgitate information all over the internet, right? So what these bots are used for are things like, for instance, scalping, right? So you know all those bots that just purchase all the tickets and those PlayStations immediately, and then the reseller just basically goes on the internet or the scalper and just sells them for exorbitant prices. Yeah, they're using bots to basically perform those automated tasks such as buying products on the internet. But then again, it also includes things like DDoSing, which again, if you don't know, is a distributed denial of service. Meaning that if somebody wants to take down websites, they use an army of bots to effectively launch negative malicious traffic and take down websites, servers, and just people from the internet. So there is a lot of criminality that exists. And unfortunately, that automated level of traffic, those bots, a good chunk of them, unfortunately, are the bad variety. Now, the thing is, obviously, this isn't a good statistic, right? And it's only going to get way worse than you can expect, right? In the next couple of months, Apple is about to launch something known as Apple Intelligence, at least in the United States. And this allows people to access generative AI and tons of these AI models through their actual iPhones. But it's not just that. You've got ChatGPT, you've got, you know, Meta's AI. Every single tech company these days has an artificial intelligence that you can tap into into that's entire job is to generate information or at least in terms of generative AI, make videos 
or at least images down the road, which means that a lot of information that is going to be generated is probably going to be AI slop that, you know, obviously we can see, you know, remnants of today, which we'll get into. But again, the other aspect of it is obviously those bad bots we just talked about whose entire job is to scrape information off the internet for human information that they can put into their models to train. That's just going to get even worse, okay? As more and more AI algorithms and tools exist, the more scraping is going to happen for that dying and dwindling human traffic that is being generated. I personally theorize that that number of bots is going to increase to a point where the internet is literally going to be, you know, like 80% bot traffic and very, very small percentage of it is going to be humans, okay? And ultimately, if there's not gonna be any people on the internet, then what is the point of letting automated scripts effectively run the tool we created to share information amongst actual human beings? So what kind of AI bot slop information exists on the internet? For instance, one of the actual perfect examples of the dead internet theory is this subreddit right here. Now, if you haven't heard about Subsimulator GPT-2, to give you an idea about what this is, this is a subreddit in where every single post is generated automatically using the GPT-2 language model by OpenAI. So this entire subreddit, if you're looking at it real carefully, all the comments, all of the subreddit topics have been made by actual artificial intelligence, right? So for instance, this one post right over here where I think they talk about chicken tikka masala, so right here, right, this one guy posted six months ago, this bot, how to make chicken tikka masala, right? Chicken chicken tikka masala make it, okay? Like, just uh, speak about it in complete, like, uh, just, just go full native. But then read the comments to this right over here, okay? Since a bot is posting it, what we are actually about to witness is fucking bot traffic interacting with bots, okay? There is no human element here. So in response to a non-existent video, this bot says, wow, they basically just used a microwave. What were they thinking? Maybe they thought it was safe and tasty. If they wanted to make it safe and tasty, they should have boiled it first. A lot of those guys are like, this is great. Thank you for sharing. I'm a student and I'm trying to learn how to make my own food. And this is the first video I found with the title, how to make blank. And it's actually very helpful. So immediately you can see all the punctuation is perfect. And if it's one thing that tells you this is bot traffic, there is no source of conflict here, okay? Nobody's arguing with each other. Like literally nobody is doing Reddit properly. B's reaction when a girl gets hit by her dad. All right, we're getting a little dark over here already. Immediately we jump from chicken tikka masala to domestic violence. But again, if you read the comments, it's even wilder. 4chan's bot goes, if you don't get to the front page of the subreddit within a month, you're a... Insert slur. I know, I am that slur. You're a FT, you're not, you're just not an FT. All right, the bot's starting to like die out over here. So yeah, we're getting to the point where, you know, we're replicating 4chaners at this point too. So yeah, you know, all of that information that you saw here was literally generated by artificial intelligence. But it's not just that, ladies and gentlemen, it gets even wilder. Now, one of the things I noticed on, you know, sites like Twitter, for instance, before I, you know, stopped using it, was uh, there was just a lot of bot usage. And I think everyone can agree, no matter where you are, there was just a lot of bots that existed on the platform. More so than, you know, when Elon even took over. It just became a huge problem. So one good example of this is this one BBC post where they talk about the Ukrainian war, right? So it's just a BBC post. They're just linking to their, like, actual news report. And then one random account, Mabel Hamilton, with like a full profile picture, this obvious bot looking handle writes, sorry, but I can't generate a response based on the prompt you provided. Like basically patently just explaining to everyone that it is in fact a bot that exists on the internet just to serve fake engagement. I think one really good example of actual AI generated imagery or just AI effectively clogging up the internet and making it seem more dead than it really is, or actually, turning the internet dead is something known as insane AI Facebook slop, okay? Now you've probably seen handles of this on the internet, people sharing, it's a whole subgenre. So literally you go to like Facebook and like on random pages, there'll just actually be AI images. So this one image is literally artificial intelligence. No house looks like that. Like if you took five seconds to actually zoom in and look at this house, it doesn't make sense. But at least in this mind, you've seen that 2.6 thousand accounts have interacted with this but somehow it only has 49 comments and 152 shares. So that number is grossly disproportionate to the amount of people that have apparently interacted with it. 
even on YouTube, like if you actually look at actual like content around on the platform, you'll find out very quickly that there's plenty of channels that are quite literally just AI slop that exists, right? For instance, there's one video that is like the most feared kid in prison. Now this is by a channel known as Deadly Quest, and it's 35 minutes long. So if you look at the actual, um, if you actually look at the thumbnail for it, clearly this is AI generated, okay? So if you click onto the Into video the over chilling. here, YouTube is supposed to identify if videos are actually AI generated in some capacity, but I don't really see that identifier anywhere. In fact, if I go to the comments over here, I don't see anything of that nature. So maybe they didn't like either flag it as that, but if you look at it, the comments are turned off. You got 3.6 thousand likes, which makes no sense for a video that got 1 million views. So it was posted on September 11, 2023. Well, it was a tragedy, that's for sure. ...world where ruthless children exist beyond fiction. From the Bever brothers to Mary Bell, young perpetrators of unimaginable horrors, showing no remorse for their heinous acts, are in abundance. So Kids it's like a listicle video where they obviously looked up, like, you know, most insane children trials on the internet, evil kid trials. They probably looked up some fucked up shit, made a listicle video out of it, and obviously the narration, as you're hearing, is not an actual human being. Uh, I, would, I would bet every single dollar that I have to my name that that was obviously an AI <laughs> narration. But again, you start to look into it, and it's a pretty huge industry, right? Like some of these videos get like 500,000 views. He is the most feared child in prison. I wonder how much of this like actual narration was done entirely. I wonder how much of the script was just all AI generated stuff. Like they bought a subscription to chat GPT, generated it, and these videos have become huge. Like it's an entire massive thing. And if you start to read the comments over here, you literally see that the human beings that have interacted will say, it's astonishing how the narrator can tell a 30 word story with 130,000 words. The repeating got annoying. This could have been interesting if it had not been repeating over and over and over again. But yet, it's an incredibly popular era of content, like half a million views for something generated entirely, I would assume, mostly, if not all, by just AI stuff. Again, it's not a human being making it, it's all just bot traffic. It's all just bot made shit. Obviously, the internet of yesteryears, like if you look at just some of these websites like Hansen's page, I mean, shit, the best example that I can bring right over here is good old John Titer's website. Back in the day, the internet of yesterday used to look much like this, okay? Literally, you would just find hoaxes like John Titer, because obviously time travel was not proven by this magician. You'll find out, you know, they start talking about things like U.S. government. Like, this was the original point, reading insane schizo conspiracy theories about time traveling U.S. government shit. Wars from the future would be written like this. And this was not AI. This was a human being coming up with stuff like this. I mean, you're talking about back in the day when, again, the oldest of the internet used to be, before websites were a thing, people would connect to things like these BBSs, for instance, where human beings, not bots, would interact and share video games, share files with each other. I mean, shit, back in the day, you used to be able to learn Klingon on the internet and get a whole license for it. I mean, that, that website still exists. This is one of the oldest running websites, an actual Klingon language institute. But again, beyond just slop and AI stuff on the internet, one of the other things about the dead internet theory was a conspiracy that maybe it was the government that was effectively controlling the way human beings would think. So to give an idea about it, ladies and gentlemen, obviously we're getting into some conspiratorial stuff here. And uh, my favorite part of this conspiracy is mentioning a game known as Metal Gear Solid 2. So one of the best monologues in Metal Gear Solid 2 towards the end of the game is when the AI, and again, ma major spoilers for a game uh, that is super duper old, by the way, the game actually starts to detail artificial intelligence controlling the flow of information and what kind of information you read and see on the internet, which is harrowingly similar to the stuff that we've seen literally just happen to us in the last few years. Watch this. Raiden, are you receiving? We're still here. How is that possible? The AI was destroyed. Only GW. Who are you? To begin with, we're not what you'd call human. Over the past 200 years, a kind of consciousness formed layer by layer in the crucible of the White House. It's not unlike the way life started in the oceans four billion years ago. The White House was our primordial soup, a base of evolution. We are formless. We are the very discipline and morality that Americans invoke so often. How can anyone hope to eliminate us? As long as this nation exists, 
so will we. Cut the crap! If you're immortal, why would you take away individual freedoms and censor the net? <laughs> Jack, don't be silly. Don't you know that our plans have your interests, not ours, in mind? What? Jack, listen carefully, like a good boy. The mapping of the human genome was completed early this century. As a result, the evolutionary log of content, but to create filtered state is misinterpreted. Never current digitized world. Trivial information is accumulating every second, preserved in all its triteness. Never fading, always accessible. Rumors about petty issues, misinterpretation, slander. All this junk data, preserved in an unfiltered state, growing at an alarming rate. It will only slow down social progress, reduce the rate of evolution. Right. You seem to think that our plan is one of censorship. Are you telling me it's not? You're being silly. What we propose to do is not to control content, but to create context. Create context? The digital society furthers human flaws and selectively rewards development of convenient half-truths. Just look at the strange juxtapositions of morality around you. So this monologue, which is probably the most profound seven to eight minutes of content in Metal Gear Solid 2 that one will ever see, comes from a video game that launched, what, around 2000, 2001 for the PlayStation 2? Pretty much predicted the future of artificial intelligences corralling and basically guiding human beings into feeds that probably, you know, that they would waste tons of their time on. So for instance, if you go onto the internet and you go to like any website, whether it be YouTube, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, really any social media platform, you'll honestly find out that the algorithms are designed to keep you effectively engaged. So if you ever find yourself wasting time by scrolling and swiping on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, or just reading Reddit for hours upon hours a day, and trust me, you know who you are, it's probably because the algorithms are keeping you constantly locked to new information over and over and over again. Now, the way that the conspiracies kind of kick in, at least in Metal Gear Solid 2's case, and how it portrays the world is artificial intelligence can control information and control context in a way that it allows you to basically listen to what they're saying as objective truths and realities. Effectively, when the information is controlled, monitored by bots and algorithms, people see what the algorithm wants them to see. So one of the exact explanations one will bring up to is something known as the Saigon execution. Now, this is an image that I'm censoring, but it's a pretty popular image back from the Tet Offensive of the Vietnam War. And this image was so profound that it was one of the most important you know, things, one very important moment in the Vietnam War history where public opinion of the war had shifted. And basically the way that I can describe this image is an individual had a gun put to their head and that was the execution right there. So obviously the context around this information, again, context in Metal Gear's case, was Nguyen Von Lem, the person being executed, was an individual that was a captain in the Viet Cong. And them and their wife lived as undercover arms traffickers in Saigon. The guy who was actually committing the execution, Nguyen Nhoc Lone, was the chief of Republic of the Vietnam National Police. So the execution, obviously, when you look at that image, devoid of any context or, you know, whatever context an algorithm wants to feed you, you might look at that and feel sympathy for the person being executed. But when looking into the actual justifications, Lem's, the person being, you know, executed, their action, basically had amounted to that person being involved in some pretty serious issues, targeted killings of prominent people opposed to the Viet Cong, and in some cases, a story had emerged in the 80s where Lem had just murdered a police major, a subordinate and close friend of General Lone, and the major's whole family. So again, Eddie, uh, Eddie Adams believed and repeated the story. It turns out that the Viet Cong lieutenant who was killed in the picture had murdered a police major, one of General Lone's best friends, his whole family, wife, kids, the same guy. So these are things we didn't know at the time. Again, context is important regardless of what you see. And again, depending on what the times have detailed, you know, what, what the politics of the area is, how context is created, an image of, you know, a Mujahideen fighter, you know, in the year 2005 has a much different context 
than back in the 80s when those same fighters were going against the Red Army, the Soviets, and were an ally of the United States. Okay, so again, context really matters, and how that information is presented matters. A good example is you really can't be sure what story is correct. All you can understand is that there is a photo of, at least in this case, the Saigon execution actually happening. What is the actual truth? What is the context? Well, that is controlled by, again, these internet feeds, these algorithms. So why am I going into this, you know, massive tangent and bringing Metal Gear 2 into the mix? If you go back to the conspiracy right over here, you'll find out that obviously from 2012 and 2018, a lot of it involves the U.S. military. For instance, in 2012, the smith Month Modernization Act gives the U.S. government full legal authority to use propaganda against its own population, undoing rules put into place after Operation Mockingbird's discovery and the church committee. So basically from what I'm understanding, and I'm not a lawyer, I don't understand this entirely, but according to, you know, at least uh, this Wikipedia post over here, uh, what they would say is uh, the dissemination of propaganda produced for foreign audiences, uh, that would basically overturn a ban on domestically disseminating that. And this would effectively eliminate the distinction between foreign and domestic audiences, meaning that technically this would allow U.S. propaganda intended to influence foreign audiences to be used on the domestic population. And that was according to uh, BuzzFeed News right over here. So again, after that, there was uh, apparently several DARPA NSA contracts given to Google, Facebook, Amazon, which again, no source for this, but it doesn't seem out of the ordinary. Uh, again, a lot of big tech companies work with the United States government. Just look up Microsoft and their involvement with the US military. Then of course, you've got Google releasing a bunch of neural linguistic machine learning programs in 2016. Deep fake leaks start to become released and it's confirmed for decades now that Reddit, YouTube, votes, and view counts are fakes and completely manipulated. And that is, of course, you know, linked to Intelligencer from New York Magazine. So according to this, they say the people are fake in some cases, where obviously the company says only a tiny fraction of its traffic is fake. And that is, of course, YouTube saying it. But fake subscribers are enough of a problem that the site undertook a purge of spam accounts. And again, if they're referring to YouTube spam accounts, YouTube does periodically remove bot accounts or spam traffic that could occur on its website. Obviously, bots and spam is a huge problem on the platform. Nobody is questioning that. But obviously, this is where the dead internet theory starts to, again, showcase its... Um, a bit of its reality over here, a bit of how this thing actually ended up coming into, into fruition. So according to this, bots are a huge thing, right? When we're talking about fake, uh, you know, engagement. Make it so an opinion can be repeated more and more. They are faster than us. So the positive feedback makes is so we copy the bots. And anonymity can't do anything against it because we can't influence the bot like we could a human. This is an easy weapon to manipulate people. So anyone with an agenda can use a bot. And again, this is like where you start to read things about like recently, there was, uh, I guess, uh, there was a couple of YouTubers that were apparently being allegedly paid by Russian, you know, uh, state media, the Russian government to spread propaganda allegedly into the United States. But here's the thing. If you have a bunch of bots on the internet constantly hyping up something, how do you discern if a human being is it or, or is it a bot? You know, if you have like 100,000 people online repeating a point or repeating anything, you know, maybe it really is like 10,000 of those people are actually humans and the other 90,000 are just bots trying to make it look like a situation is bigger than it actually is. So they bring up like a couple of posts right over here from the Young Turks, for instance. And they mentioned this uh, in their description, a startup known as Narrative Science designed a program that writes human-like stories, right? Now it's used for sport articles, but will it eventually be used to write news and political articles? So then they point to obviously Narrative Science as a company. And one of the important highlights is Narrative Science has several investors, including SAP and InQtel, the investment arm of the Central Intelligence Agency. So I didn't even know this until today, but InQtel, is that actually like a aspect of it? InQtel is an American not-for-profit venture capital firm. Owner is literally the Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> it's a venture capitalist firm that belongs to the fucking CIA. I didn't even know the CIA is actually investing like that. That's crazy. So even the image boards to go back to 4chan, finally, as we wrap this video on, cause it's getting longer than I expected. You literally can see people posting on like over here, like OP is talking. And then of course you go down a little bit 
and it's just chat GPT-3. And then it's OP, and it's just chat GPT-3. It's crazy shit. You know, back in the day, at least when you were arguing with somebody on the internet, at least it was a fucking human being. Now it's like every time you engage with somebody or you do anything, there's a good chance that all you're doing is engaging with a bot, ladies and gentlemen. So at the end of the day, look, this video has gone on longer than it is, and I've went into a bunch of conspiracies and tangents. And uh, today I found out that the CIA has a venture capitalist firm. So that's a rabbit hole I definitely want to go down more and more into. But before the sniper bullet flies into my head, I want to just uh, basically, you know, get out of here and just say, ladies and gentlemen, the internet is dead, all right? The internet is dying. And frankly, we're the ones that ended up killing it, okay? Now, like I said, you know, at the end of the day, if the whole scenario goes where less and less human traffic exists and more and more bot traffic exists, I wonder if we're going to reach like sort of this critical mass scenario where things ultimately have to be reset, okay? For the internet to work, there has to be a human component to it. Otherwise, it's just computers basically generating requests and information for the sake of doing requests and information. Human beings design the internet to share information and experiences with each other, not to let it run amok with scripts and scrapes and bots all around. So yeah, the dead internet theory, it's a wild theory. It used to be a theory, but I would say, and go as far as to point out, that it is in fact an objective reality. The internet is dying and frankly, we've killed it. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it, I am out.